Now, I think we have now had a look at equilibrium. Before that, we had calculation of EMF or cell potential. Before that, we had half cells and the reactions. And then before that, we had the structure of the galvanic cell. Now it's time to get to our electrolytic cell. What is different in electrolytic cell from what we have just heard? Let's see. Let's look at the picture first. And then you try and give me the labels and the functions of all those labels. I challenge you to come and say it out loud. Shout it out if you want to remember you are hardworking learners and you want to score. This section I said before, easy 40 marks. You can get easy 40, 45 to 50 marks. That's my guess. And the main sections I've just covered with you. Here goes. We now go to electrolysis, which is on page 32. And there's a definition which you'll find on that same page. By the way, DC stands for direct current. So we use electricity or electric current, direct current, and we change the chemicals. In fact, we break a chemical up, that chemical which is called the electrolytes, we break that up. So here goes, here's an example of such a cell. What is obvious about this is that we have a battery, electric, direct current, with a negative terminal and a positive terminal. Why do we use a battery? Oh, the battery supplies direct current of electrons, so electrons is going to flow in this direction. So this one will be full of electrons. This one will take in the electrons, will need electrons to the positive side, because electrons are negative, and they will want to move to the positive side. So what do we call this side? This side will grab electrons from the anions from the Cr minus, from the chloride ions, from the bromide ions. You get the idea? This one will catch, grab the electrons. So the chemicals here will lose electrons. So what happens at the anode? The anode is an electrode or a conductor where oxidation occurs. That means anions lose electrons. That's what the anode is. It is therefore the positive electrode because it's connected to the positive side of the battery. Also, it's positive because it attracts the anions, the negative ions, who will lose the electron. The side cathode. Let's see the cathode is connected to the battery's negative terminal. Therefore, it will be negatively charged, full of electrons, negative, and it will draw cations. That means positive ions. And the positive ions will get free electrons here. They will get it and that will be reduction. So what happens at the cathode? The electrode there, this electrode, which is a conductor, by the way, is where reduction occurs, and these cations will gain electrons, so reduction will take place there. What can we say about the electrolyte? The definition again, an electrolyte is a solution of mobile ions that conduct electricity. you find this definition on page 28, and please read there. And lastly, what can we say about this whole process of supply energy, split chemicals up, and make two new chemicals? We say that we take electric energy, and we convert it into the energy of the chemicals, into chemical energy. So the conversion is electrical energy, converted into chemical energy. Lastly, let me just summarize for you again. The anode attracts anions, steal the electrons. The anode is the positive terminal. The cathode is a negative terminal coming from the negative side of the battery. It supplies electrons and give it to the cations, the positive ions, whatever it is. And this is the trick that you must remember for all the next few examples that we're going to look at. I have around about seven minutes. And in those seven minutes, I want to look at four applications of electrolysis. You now know the structure, anode, cathode in one cell, electrolytic cell. And we know we start with the most important, powerful source of energy, 
a direct current or a battery and we supply and we send that energy into the beaker, into electrolyte and we tell those chemicals, please separate, please move around. So the current is inside the electrolytic cell in solution because the ions are mobile, the ions move around. Some to the positive side, that is the anode, and some to the negative side, the cathode. Now, let's look at the first application. In other words, where do we use this? You need to know four applications. They can ask you any one of those. It's easy stuff. Just look for ions, which one they are, which side they are moving, and what happens? We get full marks for all these questions. Let's see our first application. The decomposition of copper chloride is our next topic the decomposition of copper chloride. In other words, I take a battery, I connect it to my cell here, which consists of two electrodes in one container, and my electrolyte is copper chloride. It dissolves there. In other words, the copper ions and the chloride ions are lying around. So, electrons coming, electrons go to one side. Which side would you say? Of course, to the copper side. And who loses electrons on this side? It is the chloride ions. And both of them are in aqueous solution. In other words, they are separated inside here. So let's just look at the half reactions of this quickly. What happens at the anode? Anode always, oxidation for anode. Here goes, watch carefully. So we find here that the chloride ions come this way, and the battery steal the electrons. There they get rid of the electrons, they lose the electrons. So this is oxidation, and there's the chlorine gas coming from the chlor two chloride ions, give me chlorine gas. And therefore, the chloride ion is the reducing agent, because reducing agents undergo oxidation. So that's what happened here. What happens here? That mister over there, chloride ion, comes here, lose electrons and the gas bubbles off and the electrons move nicely through my ammeter my voltmeter into the battery and the battery pushes it out again and it's going over to the cathode so what are the electrons going to do who are they going to meet there let's find out the electrons is going to meet copper there and this is what happens the copper ions in solution will get the electrons and it will become copper Copper will be deposited here, and this will increase in mass. It will grow in mass. It will increase, and that one will decrease slightly. And now we call this chemical that comes here. In other words, the copper ions in solution is called the oxidizing agent. And this reaction we call the reduction of reaction. Now, I'm wondering whether you actually can complete the entire net reaction for me. Want to try? Let's see whether you can actually do it. I want you to write it out. And if there's a teacher around, ask carefully whether you're on the right track. How do you do it? Let me just explain quickly on the screen. You take what's left of the arrow, that reducing agent, that oxidizing agent, add them together, write down the arrow, and then, of course, you write down your products, chlorine gas and copper. Let's see if you did it that way. There we go. Copper ions, that side. Chloride ions, that side. One direction, and I get my copper plus my chlorine gas. Interesting, huh? Now, Let's go to application number two. Study it a while. Tell me what you see. Ah, I see electrolytic cell. How do I know that this is an electrolytic cell? In fact, I've got a question or two for you. How do I know that this is an electrolytic cell? Number one, I see my energy source. Direct source of energy. The energy sent in here to change some chemicals. You got it? Question for you. What is the electrolyte? Give me 
the name of the salt that was dissolved in water and that can now carry the current inside here. In other words, where some ions can move around. My salt is silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. Remember our rules? All nitrates are soluble. So how do we deposit a thin layer of silver onto our little black rhino here? You'll find some information on page 33 for your information. I take pure silver because I want to cover that with silver. So the silver dissolves or undergoes oxidation so the electrons are drawn up on the positive side on the anode and the silver ions go into solution silver ions go into solution and set electrons free electrons go that way attracted by the positive terminal of the battery next those electrons move through, those electrons move through, right through, and they come to here, and they sit here, and they invite those silver ions in solution. They say, come here, let's give you an electron, let's give silver ions an electron, and voila, there we have silver, which deposit onto our, not black rhino anymore, but silver rhino now. So our object is plated, and it, the object that must be plated must always be on the cathode side so that the electrons can combine with the ions in solution. I've got two questions for you. Can you write the overall reaction? That plus that, that plus that, gives me, gives me, that plus that, that plus that. Now the question, I have another question for you. Why does the silver ion concentration in electrolyte always remain constant? Why does that happen? Simply, as the silver ions are used up, it is supplied by the anode. Very simple, eh? no problem. You use, you produce. Or you produce and you use. Now let's go on to example number three learners so far i think you've done two applications of the electrolytic cell let's do copper refining and then of course the extraction of aluminium quickly in about five minutes and then i'll have my last few words and encouragement for you let's go to our second last example now let's say we get some impure copper Hey, and don't sell that copper to those dealers, remember? Copper is important in our economy. We get impure copper, and we want to purify it. So what do we do? So what do we do here? We simply watch carefully. We refine it. We send some electrons in here and we invite the copper ions over and get pure copper on that side. And this solution contains copper ions, for instance. Can you suggest an electrolyte now? Copper sulfate, that's good. Copper nitrate would also work. Here's a question for you. Is this sketch that you see here, does it represent electrolysis or not? And why do you say so? Of course, because... I'm starting with the energy, which is my electrical energy, and I'll change the chemical. Electrical energy changes into chemical energy, and this is non-spontaneous reaction because I must force the changes in the chemicals. And here are the half reactions. Here are the half reactions. That copper becomes copper ions. They go in solution, and then... I take those copper ions and I put them together with the electrons and I get copper on this side. What is the electrolyte? I already asked you. And what is the overall cell reaction? Can you do that? It will be that one plus that one, arrow that one plus that one. That is how we will look at that one. And here comes the last one. Aluminium recovering from bauxite, which we get from Australia. I will not say which rugby team lost this week or which one as one us, but we import our aluminium from 
epoxide we get and this is bauxite this is aluminium 3 oxide the hydrated version and this is the process the whole herald process and this you'll find on page 34 and here's the structure of it we have graphite which is a form of carbon inert electrons that do not take part in the reaction now in this case it is not so inert you'll find out now now that these electrodes actually take part they are reactive electrodes and here we then take the aluminium and we put it in a solution with cryolite and that's a formula for cryolite we take a solution of bauxite which is aluminium oxide and we put it in solution of cryolite why do we do that because we want to drop the temperature from there to 950 degrees when we work this is the effect of the solution and then what happens after that we find that the oxygen at the anode becomes oxygen that evaporates and the oxygen goes up here bubbles up but then they meet carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is oxidized to form sorry the carbon rods which is graphite is oxidized to give carbon dioxide let's go again the oxygen ions they become oxygen gas and the oxygen gas combines with the reactive graphite anode and then gives us carbon dioxide the aluminium part positive side they gain electrons and it becomes pure aluminium and the aluminium is molten aluminium here at the bottom and that way we get pure aluminium from aluminium trioxide please read on page 34 there's a lot of information specifically look at the negative impacts on human development and the negative impact on the environment on page 34 you need to know this here goes our summary for the day number one we've done the galvanic cell and you'll find these notes on these pages in your telematics booklet we've said in the galvanic cell there's an energy change remember from chemical energy to electrical energy that's correct do you remember what the three standard conditions are something about the temperature something about the concentration of the electrolytes and then of course if there's a gas what is the pressure of the gas that's supposed to be one atmosphere do you know how to do the cell notation do you remember how to do this cell notation reducing agent dash mm -hmm. salt bridge yes do you know the structure of the galvanic cell and what the half cells look like those two beakers do you know how to do the net cell reaction you'll find that on page 27 and you know how to do the calculation of the standard emf and can you write at least four lines about chemical equilibrium what increases what decreases and why is our cell potential then zero and which way are the reactions going then also we had a look at the electrolytic cell and we did some applications do you remember how we broke up copper chloride do you remember how we plated our black rhino? Do you remember how we got pure copper for electrical cabling in a house? And did you read up enough about the extraction of aluminium on page 34? Lastly, learners, thank you very much for your participation throughout this year. It's been a pleasure and all the comments I got told me that you understand a lot of the work. Now it's just time daily to practice. You will reap the benefits of your hard work and good luck.